Or... All right. And so every so often on <laughs> Congo Children's Corner, we want to make sure our young people understand that you can be anything or do anything. And it doesn't have to be the standard. Uh, I always, when I was little, I used to say Dr. Lawyer and then Chief that <laughs> society tries to tell you there is, that sometimes you can have a passion and make your passion your job or your career as it goes. So yes. we're gonna let Butchie introduce our guests as they talk about everything that's there. Well, welcome back. <laughs> you were just there a few seconds ago. Right? That's right. <laughs> and so, his beautiful wife, absolutely. Ms. Alicia. Absolutely. Yes, hey. hello. So, hello. you know, we, we wanted to have you come back. We just wanted to give you an opportunity to kind of share all the wonderful things that you're doing because we, we are aware and very thankful of all the things that, that you have brought for all the, the youth and just the community as a whole. And we wanted to give you an opportunity to showcase that because we think it's important that, that everybody gets an opportunity to hear that. So. Thanks. I'm going to kind of let you kind of lead in, and of course we'll have some questions for you, and we'll take it from there. Well, for those that don't know me, I'm Richard Raw. Um, I'm a musician as well as a community activist. Um, and I'm extremely excited because you, you had an opportunity to see some of the work that we've been doing in the community with our young men, our young scholars at, at Prestige with the Beyond Those Bars program. And um, I'm on a high right now because right. I've watched these young men come into the program, um, and they were a little hesitant. They didn't know what to expect. Uh, but the end result was they created a song around critical issues in their community. So I'm extremely excited. As a musician, I feel like, um, and as an artist, it, I feel like I have to give back. I feel like it's a duty and a responsibility. You know, and I always feel like I, I fail if I don't teach the next generation That's what right. I know. And, and apprentice, they have to become apprentices of what I do. So my focus is definitely on the younger generation at this point. And, um, my beautiful wife here, uh, she runs a, a nonprofit, um, and through that nonprofit, you know, she's offering. They're offering um, these really creative uh, uh, ways for for our students to learn, and and appealing to their interests. Right. If you want to talk a little bit about culture restoration project. Sure. Um, so I'm the executive director of Culture Restoration Project Inc. And what we do at Cultural Restoration Project is we just offer supplemental educational programs for youth. So we have the Beyond Those Bars program that is run at Prestige Academy and Christina Cultural Arts. And that, um, as you previously explained, is a hip hop program that focuses on reading and writing skills. And then the three C's, um, confidence, communication, and character. So through hip hop, the students are able to work on their reading, their writing, their communication skills, and then they're also able to address critical issues that happen in the communities that affect them. So um, in addition to that, we have the Right Noodle, Left Noodle Chess Program, which is in, gosh, I can't even say how many schools it's in. It's in the Red Clay School District, the Brandywine School District, and that program covers math skills. So we have the reading and writing, and then we have the math skills. You need to reach out to the Christina School District, too. Uh -uh. Yeah. I'm going to oh, throw that yes. in there. So we need <laughs> right. to talk after this. Yes, yeah. okay. Absolutely. Now, is there a certain age level that you that you start when you to reach the students? I mean, does, does it start as, as low as elementary, or are we talking, you know, fifth, middle school and up? Well, for um, culture restoration right now, mostly it's just elementary through middle. So we haven't really reached high school yet. Um, we are working to develop programming that fits that age group, though. Okay. So elementary, what, how do you introduce these programs in elementary school? Well, we have the Right Noodle, Left Noodle chess program in elementary schools. Like we have it um, in Anna P. Moat, which is an elementary school. And that, I mean, a lot of times young children don't know how to play chess, but children pick up very quickly. So we teach them chess skills. And then as we teach them how to move pieces on the chess board, we incorporate math. So a lot of times it's more about the math skills more than it is becoming a chess master, but you do have to know the basics of chess to learn those math skills. So they're learning without even knowing it. Right, right. <laughs> Sometimes you have that's, to trickle. That's right, right. right. That's the beauty. That's right. the beauty of what we do. You know, uh, these students, you know, I'm pointing out many things that they've learned. And they're like, oh, yeah, I guess I did learn that, you know? Yeah. <laughs> There's a technology side because I bring the, the studio to the students, and then I'm showing them exactly how music gets created. Right. So hopefully it, it sparks something in one of them. They say, you know, I, I might want to take that on, you know, showing them something different. It's exciting. Yeah. I love my community. 
Right. Yeah, we both do. We, we just mean, give to our community. This. this is what we do. We just give to our community. We have another um, effort called Bum Rush Black Business, um, and that is something that we do monthly. We target a, a black-owned business. Um, it, it's the third Saturday of every month. At 2 o'clock. At 2 o'clock, we meet up. We encourage people to come, and we target a business, and we go and spend money in it. Because so we please look up Bum Rush Black <laughs> Businesses on Facebook because that's where we keep people updated. There are flyers all over the city as well that list our whole schedule for the whole year of 2016. So we have a different business every month that we go to support. Wow. So if someone wanted to get on your schedule, what should they do? How do they contact you? Um, a lot of times they hit us up personally, um, but if you really want to, of course, the Facebook page, and you can contact us that way. Um, because Bum Rush Black Business is more of an initiative, it's not, a, it's not our business, it's not um, anything set in stone. We really just have it as a community effort, yeah. so we don't really have like an email address for it or a website because it's more like an initiative for the whole community to participate. But um, we're everywhere. People can find us. They can tell us. So you just pick one at any time, so it's not really one that's specific. It's any time you just pick one to go after? Well, we did choose specific businesses okay. throughout 2016 because you do need a schedule so people right. know where to go. So we do have everything set for 2016, but going into 2017, we are looking. we're looking for more yes. businesses. So y'all know we're everywhere. Just, you know, let us know if you have a business and you want to be on the list. So just hit your Facebook page. You can leave a message on the Facebook page mm -hmm. if yes. you... And this okay. is Richard Raw, and then I'm Sha Janelle on Facebook. Okay, okay. Yes. okay. But right. they can find the information on Bum Rush Black Business. Yes. Okay. Bum Rush Black Businesses on Facebook. All okay. right. Now, I feel your energy. You know what I mean? I can feel <laughs> your excitement. Is there anything in particular that just got you really excited about wanting to do this? Is there like a, just, a moment that you just said, I have to do this? Or? You know, I think it was plant, it's, it's a seed that was planted in me. My mother was a community activist. Um, she ran uh, executive director um, of a program um, at Old Asbury Church, and she okay. was there for a long time. Like, this was running in the early 90s, and she used to make me volunteer. <laughs> and I'm like, I ain't getting paid for this. Right. But she made me volunteer anyway, and then, you know, I wake up one day, and I'm like, this is, we have to do something about our community. And then my mom's like, you, you following down the same path. This, right. is, this is what I taught you. And I'm mm -hmm. like, wow. Mm -hmm. So the, that's the excitement. And, you know, um, we're doing Richard Raw Week. Okay. We're real excited about that. We're right. doing a whole week-long yeah. celebration of arts, culture, and activism in the city. Okay. So we are going to start at June 4th all the way to June 11th. So each, uh, each evening is going to be a different event at a different location. And so we're real excited about that. Again, June 4th is where we start at Rodney Square with, with the good old... Uh, park jam and okay. we're, we're using local talent and we want to mm -hmm. showcase the local talent that we have there'll be vendors uh, there'll be food and live painting it's going to be beautiful and the culmination is the release of my new album word warrior okay. and that's going to be on june 11th at the queen so we're so excited about that it's going to be a, <laughs> we, we had a lot, lot going on, going on. Yeah. Yeah, busy, definitely lot busy. Going on. so now to find out all of that lot going on did we need to go to facebook how do we find go, out about what's going on you can visit richardraw.com and, and then then also culturerestorationproject.org okay so richardraw.com is basically for his music um, anything dealing with entertainment and the, pro and the different events. And then culturerestorationproject.org is the nonprofit, and that's where we speak about the youth programming. Okay. Yeah. Now, what would you say to encourage youth out there to, I guess, kind of take their own path and maybe know that they don't have to follow the norm? The norm. <laughs> what, what would be considered the norm? Well, right. <laughs> yeah, like they, if they think of something, because I mm -hmm. say, look at the people who valid pooper scoopers you know whoever thought i'm gonna make a lot of money yeah. scooping poop <laughs> right but there are all kinds of ways to create your own career and it starts with the things i guess that you're building the yes. confidence character and communication communication Ooh, she got it, <laughs> she got it. <laughs> i was paying attention yeah. here so really though it does start with those things so that you know you can do it. You know, you get that, like that one young man, he can do anything. I think mm -hmm. that you're really doing great. You can right. see the confidence in those young men. They, they've developed a tremendous amount of confidence. I'm so happy. And because I, 
I've seen when they first came in, I could just see they're like, I don't know how to rap. <laughs> I don't even know what's up with this. Or who, I don't even know who you are. Can you even rap? You know, they sitting there like, yeah, this is this is gonna be some BS, you know. But I work with them. I showed them what I do. I said, this is what I do. I'm an artist. So I showed them some of the things that I do um, nationally. You know, okay. they're like, you were, you were there. You were in uh, Miami and Indiana, and you did all that. And I'm like, yes. And so that broke the ice. And then okay. we were really able to talk about, you know how to be creative create your own business yes. and that's what i want them to see that you don't always have to get an education and work for somebody else exactly. but you can create your own business and that's what we're in the business of teaching people absolutely mm -hmm. and teaching them about resilience you oh, know because you know some, yeah. sometimes there there's, <laughs> there's those stumbling blocks oh, and there's yeah. peaks oh, and God. valleys that's just keep it. pushing keep pushing yeah. keep pushing don't, don't we know that's <laughs> it. That's it. absolutely so in your time with your mom, at what point do you think it really clicked on you? Because I know a lot of young people kind of give up early almost on themselves as they're putting things together. So sometimes they're like, eh, I'm not going to do this. They're just sitting in. They're thinking that they can't do it. You know, mm -hmm. here I am. I'm stuck. How do you break them out of that mold and thinking I'm stuck? You're not stuck. You just got to jump a yeah. little. Um, just encouragement. I think a, a lot of encouragement. You know, and that's what I try to do. And, and I, they need encouragement and positive reinforcement. You know, that's, that's what I use to get them out of that mode. I would say the same thing. The positive reinforcement, that is so essential. I think a lot of youth don't get enough of that. <clears throat> they hear <clears throat> a lot of negativity. Um, they might have talents, but there's no one there to push them. There's no one paying attention to even notice that they have that talent. You have to pay attention and push them and reinforce in them that you have a talent, use it. Who was there to encourage you? My parents. All right. Yeah, my parents, my mother and my father, definitely. Anything that I wanted to do, I was, I'm a writer, so I always would write, and I was always encouraged to write. Um, so make clothes, be creative. I always had that encouragement. All right. So you felt it. How about yourself? Yeah, it was definitely my mother and my father. I had a strong nuclear family unit. Okay. Um, and one of the things that I'm trying to really focus on now is, is a lot of people say the issues with some of our kids who exhibit behaviors that people don't like. They often say it starts at look at the parents and look at home. And I'm like, I understand that's idealistic, but it's not realistic because we live in a society where some households, where you have some households where parents suffer from uh, mental illness, drug that's abuse. It. So mm -hmm. I believe in we have to reestablish the extended family community mm -hmm. where we all take collective responsibility. So when I look out and I see that things are happening in the community with our youth, I, bl I look in the mirror. And, and if we all start looking in the mirror and say, this is our problem, that's this it. is not your parents mm -hmm. problem this is our problem and so that's how I look at things and and I believe if we all started thinking that way that's then it. we can actually make a change but it's the people who sit on the sidelines mm -hmm. and who aren't involved so I get yourself involved that's right in the struggle mm -hmm. for our liberation yes. for our people that's it and it doesn't take a lot to get involved it doesn't so get, let some people know because people don't they think that they have to do major like oh if i don't go every single time or you know what kind of commitments help people understand what are some of the things that they can do that are real minor that make a difference it, it's simple show up when you need to show up so <clears throat> like for instance with everyone knows the death of amy joiner at howard when that happened, that blew a lot of people away, and a lot of people were like, well, what can I do? What should I do? Well, do you know any young girls? I'm sure you do. You have a niece, a nephew, or you have a family member that has friends or whatever. Just have a conversation with them. That's all. You know, it, it, it doesn't take much. Or even um, go to a school, contact the school. I know I was at Howard right after Amy's death and I was working with some of the girls there, some of the guys there as well, and the staff and faculty. And that was just at Howard because that's where the incident occurred. But there are schools all over the city, all over the county, all over the state where parents, anyone can just contact and say, well, do you have any programming where you need help? Do you need assistance on you know, an evening where it may be extracurricular activities, it could be an hour out of your entire week. It does not take much. It really doesn't. Hey, over here, we need some help. 
<laughs> talking about schools, you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I always say, you know, time, resources, and finances. If you can't give one, right. pick the other. That's it. And okay. find an organization. Find these organizations or these programs that need assistance. Five dollars, because I think you're doing a great job. Mm -hmm. That goes a long way. A that long gives way. us an opportunity mm -hmm. to buy pencils or, right. you know, anything, notebooks. Mm -hmm. So I always say it's the practical things that we can do. Barbershops. I, I really want to transform the way our barbershops run in the city because our youth come to barbershops. They get their hair cut. So how can we develop collectively develop literature that we that can appeal to our youth? And when they come in there, not only can we give them the literature free, but we can also have conversations. The barbers need to have conversations with our youth. Positive reinforcement, historical, they need to know where they came from to, in order to know where they're going. So we have to talk about the, the history. We came from a great people, we are a great people, and they need to know that. That's for sure. Absolutely. Yeah. Have pride in themselves. Yes, definitely. Clean up your neighborhood. <laughs> that, oh, definitely. You know? Definitely. Pick up because you know but, we have. But that we have to show them. You know, it's not about. You know, they don't. They don't do as uh, we say. They do as we do. Definitely. Right. Mm -hmm. So you know, when our children are acting up or. or uh, when our young girls are dressing a certain way and we don't, we think that's inappropriate because they're attracting a certain type of attention. Who do they get it from? These are the, all of the things that we have to be concerned about. Mm -hmm. For sure. For sure. All right, and well, I'd like to thank you guys for sharing. I really hope that everyone heard the message and understand that each and every one of us can be an activist. That was going to be one of my questions. Like, Absolutely. okay, what does it take to be an activist? Very quickly, because they're telling me I have to go. But people need to know, it doesn't take a lot. It just takes doing. An activist sees uh, young girls doing something wrong, and they go over to them and, and, and tell them, you shouldn't do that right. and why exactly that's an activist that's an activist that's an activist so getting involved it doesn't take much we all can do it I look forward to each of you doing it and becoming involved in your community let me say the correct words here <laughs> I look forward to each of you becoming involved in our community um, with both young and mature people so mm -hmm. we, we need to help the entire community and help our youth help our seniors and our seniors help our youth yes. we all got to work together here and again, if you have young people that you'd like to have come on the show, please contact me, Kim at CongoFuneralHome.com. I encourage you to come on, and I thank you all so much for giving of your time and yourselves and changing each child one at a time. And of course, the principal, he does it all the time. <laughs> <laughs> all right, thank you so much. We will see you next time.